want me to look at you? Um, yeah, you can look at me. Okay, yeah. cool. So my name is Aiden Dowling. I'm 30 years old. I am a motivational speaker and social influencer. So I realized that something was different about me when I was actually pretty young. I grew up in, with my mother, she was a single parent, and I had two older brothers. So I did a lot of tomboy things, and that was okay because my mom didn't have to worry about me, I was playing with the boys. So when I was about 11 or 12, I noticed that my sexuality was different than the other girls around me. So when I was about 13 or 14, I kind of had to look at myself and be like, I think I'm a lesbian. And it took a couple of years, but by the time I was 16, I came out to my mother. I was in a Catholic school at the time, so like forced to wear a skirt and just be very feminine. And I convinced my, my mother and also my father that I really wanted to get out of Catholic school and go to public school. I knew that going into public school, 11th and 12th grade, I wanted to be more myself. I wanted to express myself in my clothing because I wasn't able to and just make friends that felt more in line with who I was. So I came out as a lesbian, I wrote my mom a letter, and she kind of was like, I already knew, I was just waiting for you to tell me kind of thing. And that was great. Like I fell in line with being a lesbian because I was like A plus B equals C. I was a girl who liked other girls, and that made me a lesbian. When I hit about 20 years old, I noticed that I was still different than the other lesbians around me. Like something doesn't match up. An ex of mine had a cousin, a, a best friend's cousin, who was a transgender man. And one day she just turned to me and was like, have you ever felt like, have you ever thought about being a guy? It rang in my head the whole night after we, I dropped her off and went back home. It just like kept going in my head, like, you wanna be a man, you wanna, and I just started really thinking about it because it was like the first time in my life someone actually gave me that option. It was like, hey, Maybe it's not your sexuality, maybe it's your gender. And I started just like Googling and looking at YouTube and looking at this website. And it was hard to find because there was no Laverne Cox, there was no Janet Mock, there was no Caitlyn Jenner, there was no Chaz Bono. There were people out there, not to discredit anybody who has helped the movement, but there was no one that the media was really highlighting or even really talking about. It was like this enlightenment. It was like this piece that fit just so right. My issue my whole life was never about my sexuality, and it was about my gender. I found out I was transgender, and I no longer wanted to die. It was like the first time I was like, I actually want to live. Like, I actually want to like maybe have a family, and maybe like buy a house, and you know, have a dog. You know, and I never felt that way before. So it was like, whoa, like this is crazy. I need to keep digging. So you still have the point, you have the notches just like in your needle and you still have the number five. I needed to raise money for top surgery. At that time, insurance companies were not covering it. So I had to pay out of pocket for top surgery, again, removal of breast tissue. And so I started a clothing company called 0.5cc. And so 0.5cc is actually the average amount of hormones that a transgender male will take of testosterone every single week throughout their whole life. And I pretty much had 250 bucks, and I had to make 250 bucks into $5,900. And I'm not a magician, but I was gonna work some kind of magic. And so it worked. I was able to raise the 5,900 in about six months, which was awesome. Then I was like, I have to keep this open. I felt indebted to the community. And so I was like, okay, all the money I make, I'm gonna give it away. And so that's what I did. Everything I have now is because of YouTube. Literally everything. My, I met my wife, Jenny Lee, on YouTube. I met some of my closest friends that I have now on YouTube. I travel the country and the world speaking about my transition and just what it is to be masculine and, and gender and all that stuff because of YouTube. When people like call me a role model or an icon, like in the trans community and stuff, it's beautiful. It, it feels so great. And it also has like, I think it makes me be a better person actually. 
and guess where we are. Oh yeah, that's what we're doing today. That was the big news. It really excited. Um, I'm just like blown away. In 2015, I got this really awesome opportunity to be on the Ellen DeGeneres show. And not just once, but twice, which was really amazing. So there was this online competition and it was for through Men's Health Magazine and it was called the Ultimate Guy Contest. An ultimate guy is a doer who gives back to his community. And I had gotten like one or two emails in this like, I don't know, 48 hour period that was like, hey, there's this contest and you should apply because how cool would it be if a trans guy was in men's health? Because the winner of the contest gets on the cover. At first I was like, oh yeah, I work out. I'm like, but they're never gonna, like I'm not gonna get picked. Like, are you kidding? Like, look at me, like I'm like, I'm five foot five. I weigh like a buck 50 soaking wet. You know what I mean? Like I'm looking at the magazine. It's all these like ripped huge dudes, right? I decided to apply because I thought people look up to me and I want them to know that we can be on this cover if we want to be. Next thing I know, you know, I'm getting these votes, online votes, online votes, online votes, online votes. Next thing I know, like this famous person's shouting me out, this famous person, I'm like, what is going on? This is crazy. So then I start going on my YouTube channel and I'm like, let's get the first trans guy on the cover of Men's Health Magazine and let's break all stereotypes of what it is to be a man today. And I think that is what caught Ellen's and the production company's eye. I can't tell you how many people say, I watched your Ellen DeGeneres show and I knew you were talking about my son, that's my son. Or I watched your Ellen show and I, you know, I showed it to my mom and she finally understood who I was. And, you know, so it was just such an amazing opportunity that I was given to, to propel my personal story and to enlighten some people who may not have known that like we're humans. I feel so comfortable in my skin now, but I haven't my whole life, that I'm almost just like, is this like, are you really calling me? Like, is this a dream? You know, is this really happening? You know, like even going, like, you know, being on the cover of Men's Health, being on the cover of Gay Times, like all these magazines, just like, really? I feel really grateful.